Guys, Mark Goldberg here from Mark Vlogs Watches with a quick word for your friend and mine, Archie Luxury, Paul Pluta, AC3, Archibald Chesterfield III. You know, he invented the quick whist watch check, and uh, the rest of us on YouTube, well, we just stole it. Help keep Archie full-time on YouTube by liking this video, watching this video, tell your fuckhead friends, and make sure to subscribe to his Patreon. And now, Archie Luxury. Hi guys, Paul Pluter on the Paul Pluter channel. Today guys, we're doing paid reviews. We're doing paid review JU68. And before we start this paid review, let's do a quick wristwatch check. What am I wearing? I'm wearing a Patek Philippe. And your calendar, the 5035, 5035. Uh, okay, guys, let's jump straight in. Okay, here we go. This is for Murillo. And uh, he says to me, hi, Paul, it's Murillo. I got a deal for my, I got, I get a deal for my Rolex Polar, Rolex Polar 16570, 2002 with box and papers and my Jager Le Coutre. Reverso Grand Tourley 2013, also with box and papers, plus 5,000 for a mint 2018 Patek Philippe 5107J 38mm yellow gold with box and papers. Do you think it's a good deal? Uh, now, this was an express question. He sent me money, and I've already, I already answered it. Um, and... Um, okay, so, so what did I think here? Why did I think? What did I think? What did I think? I tell you, there's a few little holes in this, this argument here. That's for sure. There are a few little holes. And, um, let's, let's have a little bit of a, uh, a discussion here. We've got a few holes and that's, that's, that's going to be forming a few problems Okay, we've got a number of mistakes you have made in your, you've made a number of mistakes, and this is a little bit problematic, because, I can tell you why, it's problematic because, um, uh, I, I, I've, uh, I gotta be completely frank with you, um, I don't think it's a good deal, okay? I'll tell you why. Number one, let's have a look here at the, what the problem is, okay? For starters, okay, you've got a 16.5, 16, Polar 16, so it's an Explorer 2 like mine, cool. And you've got a Reverso Grand Tourley, cool. You're going to throw in 5,000. Fuck, that's a lot of money. Now, the 5107, let's just back the truck up. Now, I owned a 5107. I think they look best in white gold <clears throat> or rose gold. You've got the the J, which is yellow gold. Okay. Now you say it's a mint 2018. No, it's not because the 5107 production of that watch it was actually replaced by the 5127 in about when was that? About 2006, 2006, I think. Around that era, well, it was certainly not 2018, Sunshine, because the model that replaced it was a 5127, okay? And both models were not 38 mil, they were 37 mil. So let's just get our facts straight. Um, What do I think there? Look, what do I think? I, I honestly, I gotta be honest with you, the paddock itself there, I think if you've got a polar and a nice Grand Tourley, they're really quite versatile. Sports watch in the Rolex, and you've got a dress watch in the Reverso. The paddock is not really an everyday watch. It's on a leather strap, uh, it's... It's a delicate, it's a dress, it's the, okay, it's the ultimate dress watch. I, I, I love the 5107. Uh, but I don't think this deal is that great. Number one, any dealer who would give you a deal, they got to be making a quid there. Uh, that's what I'd honestly, I honestly believe there. I honestly say any dealer who wants to do a swap with you, they're um, 
they're not really your friend okay they 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 are looking at uh for money so um i love the 5107 i think it's a great great watch i don't think it could fit that spot um as an everyday beater um i would say seriously um i'd say it's probably on the money i i, I think it's uh I don't think it's a super deal for you. Uh, the paddock is beautiful. Um, I still think you need a steel sports Rolex. Every man needs a steel sports Rolex. This doesn't really... All you're doing is you're getting rid of your Polar, which I think there's a lot of upside with that. The Reverso, they're a bit soft. Um, I... 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 Um, would I do it myself? Yeah, I'd pull the trigger. I love Paddock. I love Paddock. I love Paddock. Uh, but I still think you need a, a steel a steel sports. Um, still think you need a steel sports. Now, he came back to me and said, hey, I said to him, go for it. Um, what about instead of an Explorer, I put my Pam... And I, and I said to him, and I said to him, I said to him, look, 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 look. I don't know, uh, I don't know exactly quite what he meant there. He kind of, um, he says to me, time has passed and some watches had gone, others have gone. I'm planning to add a Trinity piece, um, but unfortunately I do not have a total amount to afford it. It's the Paddock Calatrava. Okay, now he's looking at a rose gold one. This was in July. This is an iconic piece. My dilemma is is what piece or pieces I have to sell for this deal. The paddock is around 17 US. <clears throat> I now have 7,000. What pieces do you suggest? Oh, okay. He's going to take... Oh, he's got a few. See, he, he didn't quite... <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> the problem is the dealer... The dealer, I don't think, will really want a fucking Pam. You know, that that's uh, the Reverso Grand Date. Um... I don't know what pieces you sold. This is a little bit confusing here. Um, this is what he's saying to me. Look, I think the paddock is beautiful. 17 US is... That, that, that's, that's the money. That's the money. Yeah, <laughs> that's not terrible. That's not terrible. Uh, it's a good reference. It's a great reference. Remember, it can't be 2018, but okay. And it can't be 38. That's their 37 mil. I I think from your collection there, it, it's it's a great piece. I think you'll love it. I really do think you will love it. And I think every if you've got a chance to get a paddock, but you got to remember, um, you got to remember these paddocks themselves. They are a delicate dress watch. They're not an everyday genre. Yes, they got a screw in crowd. Yes, yes, yes. But you've got to treat it with utmost respect. Okay, so. You've actually, he's got a nice collection there. What would I, look, I, I would say to you, look, looking at your collection, what would I get rid of? You have $7,000, so you need to find 10000 US. Well, the problem is, the pieces you, you want to get rid of, they're dodged, they're hot, they're soft. Okay, so you've got a JLC Grand Date Reverso. Yeah. Speedy, you don't want to sell the Speedy. You got a Speedmaster 861, okay. You got a Breitling Old Navy Timer A13320. You'd love to get rid of that, but the dealer's going to slaughter you. The PAM005, again, ditto, the dealer's going to slaughter you. The Rolex Explorer 2, yeah, that could be a good thing. You got a Rolex Daytona Gold with the Zenith movement on a leather strap. No, you'd want to keep that, keep that. The Hulk, uh, Sea Dweller 116600. Uh, sorry, you've got a Sea Dweller, and you've also got a Hulk as well. Well, I think you've got a, you'd have to, ch and you've also got a Two-Tone Bluesy 2013, and a couple of Connies, well, the Connies deal is going to screw you. Um, i got to be completely honest with you. Um, I, I think you've got to work out, I think the Paddock is well worth getting, it is, but you're going to, the deal is not going to want shit. Okay, dealer wants Rolex. 
Okay, that's that's the big problem. Dealer's not going to take garbage to get paddock to, to and trade paddock. You, you know, he, he's not going to give you paddock when you're trading garbage. And that's the unfortunate thing. A lot of these other things here are fucking garbage. The dealer doesn't really want... He's not going to want Pam. He's not going to want Breitling, that's for sure. He's going to want the Rolex, okay? So would I do it? You betcha. I fucking would... A chance to own a 5107. I think that's one of the most beautiful Calatravas. I've got a 5296, but I still miss... I still miss the 5107. It had a certain charm to it. It's got the smooth, flat bezel... It's just such an elegant, classy watch. It is class. It's <laughs> it's just chic. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think myself, um, pull the trigger. Fuck it. Pull the trigger. Grab it. You're going to have to sell Rolex. I know that's a bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of pill to swallow. But hey, life, you've got you to gotta have Padex. Padex, Padex fucking rock, man. Patek Philippe, Patek Philippe. So pull the fucking trigger. I'm Paul Pluto. This has been a paid review, paid review, paid. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Like, subscribe, tell your fuckhead friends and tell me what you fuckers think of that. Nice one, Arch. Great vids. Remember, Archie can't survive on Google Ads alone. Paid reviews, keep him full time. Paid reviews. Until next time, ciao fuckers. Hey Archie Luxury fans, if you're into luxury, then you gotta be into 66 Buick Rivieras. Check out my son and I, Alex, as we restore this beautiful 66 Buick. Neighbors are having a picnic, you know, having fun and stuff. Me, I'm doing cars. It's what I've done my whole life. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Mark Goldberg for Archie Luxury AC3, the Pontiff Satan DeVille. I want to sincerely thank you for having sat through this video because I know it was awful, but you know what? You do it for the greater good of humanity. Thank you so much. Now, a couple of quick pieces of homework. Now that you've watched this video, I would like you to hit thumbs up. If you must, hit thumbs down, but if you'd hit thumbs up, I would especially appreciate it. 
go ahead and leave a really nasty comment and tell him how awful this content was. But most importantly of all, the entire reason that I am linking up with Archie Luxury in the first place. I am a published author. Let dogs be dogs. Available in bookstores, Amazon, and electronically somewhere near you. Remember, Archie Luxury, he's not just a figment of your imagination.